John Wick is arguably one of the greatest action movie series to ever release. But what makes it so good? Today, we delve into the first installment of the franchise and find out exactly why it's so incredible. Act 1. The Plot Don't get me wrong, John Wick's plot is nothing special. It's a simple storyline of a man who loses everything and seeks to either get it back or enact revenge. However, what makes this story so unique is how quickly the film makes you empathise with John. In the very early scenes, we already see John lose his wife and the struggles that follow. John struggles to move on and begin his new life, which links to a larger theory which we'll discuss later on. John finds solace in his car and then of course, his dog, which is gifted to him by his late wife. However, less than an hour into the film, John hits rock bottom. His wife has already passed, his car is stolen, and his dog is murdered. This combination leads to one of the greatest revenge stories to ever be put on camera, and leads to one of the most iconic lines of all time. Baba Yaga. So you can either hand over your son, or you can die! Uh -huh. Act 2, The Characters This film has some of the coolest characters that I've ever seen. John himself is surrounded by such an aura that puts him on a legendary status from the get-go. The stories you hear about him and the fact that everyone universally fears him is such a cool concept. Once John quote-unquote returns and enters the Continental, we are introduced to a plethora of interesting individuals. Sharon, the hotel clerk, is fueled by mystery, and the boss of all assassin, Winston, grows into such a unique character who aids John in intricate ways. The villain characters like Vigo and Yusef serve as fantastic bad guys in which you resent from the very beginning. Even smaller characters like Jimmy and the cleaning crew add some unique comic relief. Evening, John. Evening, Jimmy. Noise complaint. Noise complaint. Good night, John. Good night, Jimmy. And one of my favourite characters in the whole series, Marcus, turns out to be such a true friend of John and a real sidekick in the film. Until, well, yeah. Act 3, Iconic Scenes and Camera Work. I think a major selling point for John Wick and why it is renowned as one of the greatest action films of all time is the action scenes themselves. The choreography and the camera work in these scenes are some of the best I've ever seen. This combined with the viewer wanting to see John Wick go absolutely ham is a pair made in heaven. Scenes like this where John single handedly tears apart a secure safe house is honestly incredible. This to even my favourite scene of all time, the nightclub scene which has a perfect mix of lighting camera movement, music, and believability. I mean, just look at this. I think another thing that's very unique to the John Wick franchise is how each action scene is bred in realism, where each movement feels organic, and yes, you guessed it, ammunition actually exists. I think another credit to the film is the way that they even make the way that John Wick reloads his gun into such a cool little moment in the film. Nothing in these scenes seems out of place or unrealistic. The pacing in this film is also superb, as the viewer gets nice breaks in between these big action sequences where John gets prepared for the next fight and the story is developed. Act 4, The Theory. Now I touched on this earlier, but this is honestly one of the coolest concepts. John Wick is says to have five film releases, and each film explores a specific aspect of grieving. The five being denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Each film explores a new angle of John and the universe he finds himself in, and this idea is just incredible. The movie we're talking about today, the first installment, it focuses on denial where John refuses to let go of his past life. This can be seen in things like him leaving his wife's belongings near his bed. Another cool concept or theory 
is that the use of color in John Wick is very, very deliberate. John himself is generally presented in greens or blues. Vigo and the other characters drawing John back into the assassin life are presented in reds. And characters who represent hope to John to escape this old life, such as Helen, Daisy, and Marcus, generally have gold color schemes. This can be seen in Helen's gold bracelet, Daisy's gold tag, and everything about Marcus's clothing, lighting, and home decor. Even look at this, even when Marcus isn't wearing gold, he's lit in gold light. That is just amazing to think about. Even look at this in the nightclub scene, as John Wick kills these uh, individuals, their blood red smears across the windows, representing that divide between him in those greens and those blues, and then the evil guys in the red. John Wick was one of the best releases of 2014, and to this day serves as one of the best movie experiences out there. If you haven't watched it yet, check it out you definitely won't be disappointed. I hope today helped you understand just why John Wick is so good and why it is ingrained in the greatest movies of all time. Thank you for watching and let us know what your thoughts are in the comments below. It was just a fucking car, just a fucking dog. Just a dog. John. It's a matter of focus. Evening, John. Evening, Jimmy. Commit to me. She has will. You, uh, working again? No, I just sorted some stuff out. Baba Yeager.